SJWs and feminists cheer when friendships end. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and one thing I forgot to mention in my video from a few days ago about the feminist Facebook fit was the sugary sweet rewarding rhetoric that happens when they are successful in throwing a fit on somebody's Facebook timeline in order to annoy that person into unfriending or blocking a mutual friend that they don't like. This is a particularly vile component to the pattern from feminists and SJWs that are trying to rid their social spheres of non-believers as these types of conflicts are almost unanimously inspired by the SJWs and feminists' own abusive behavior. However, of course, once the smoke is clear and their victim is excommunicated and unable to defend themselves, they'll turn around immediately and act super nice to their mutual friend who unfriended or blocked the non-believer. Feminists and SJWs who exhibit this behavior use this method of social manipulation mainly on fence-sitting mutual friends that believe intersectional feminism to be laudable in goal, but aren't necessarily full-blown fourth-wave intersectional feminist social justice warriors themselves. Obviously, if the mutual friend was already a full-blown SJW, they wouldn't need social manipulation done on them. Also, if their mutual friend is independent-minded, possesses integrity, and has shown a strong will in regards to being a loyal friend to their other friends, the SJW will probably mostly avoid interacting with them on social media because they know their powers of manipulation will mostly be useless. This is why there's plenty of good people that know feminists and swear that they haven't noticed this awful behavior from SJWs and feminists, even though they know several of them. The SJWs and feminists know perfectly well that they can't pull any of their usual bullshit on their sensible high school friends' timeline. But if you show any signs that you could be converted, like blood in the water, they'll monitor your Facebook posts and they'll try to convert you. And they'll do this more often than not by trying to first demonize your sane friends and family and attempting to separate you from them. This is classic cult behavior, for the record. You see... While true believer, aggressive feminist SJWs aren't particularly socially intelligent people when it comes to understanding the values of integrity and forming positive, lasting relationships, they definitely do specialize in short-term manipulation brought about by cunning and deliberate dishonesty. Thus, a great way of converting people into their way of thinking is by creating an out-group of supposedly sexist, transphobic, and racist people that are in one's immediate social surrounding. If feminist SJWs can point fingers at your mutual friend and say, See, he's a misogynist! Unfriend him! Not only can they begin isolating you, but they can use that former friend as a point of reference to continue to manipulate you. Of course, for this to work organically and not as the product of a creepy cult-like social engineering tactic, this would require a large number of legitimately bigoted people to be in your immediate friend circle on social media, which probably don't exist. You probably don't know a bunch of bigots. But don't worry, they will always be able to make do with what is available. Fourth wave intersectional feminist social justice warriors have trained themselves for years now in the art of finding ways to claim to be offended, as well as passive aggressively insulting those who typed a comment that was supposedly offensive. Picking these types of cry bully fights on the internet is one of their main pastimes. And so... Let's say you are the fence sitter that I'm talking about. I'll call you James. James, who is unsure whether your loyalties should be fighting for intersectional feminist social justice or just being friends with normal people that you enjoy. 
Hopefully, I still have some audience members like this. I know I used to. What happens is that the SJW feminist picks the fight with your friend on your Facebook timeline. Maybe because he posted a South Park gif, and the SJW comes up with a snide way of pissing him off, calling him a bro or bruh, or something, of course, and telling him that he was problematic and that he should go troll somewhere else. Obviously, your non-SJW friend gets annoyed and reacts something to the effect of, Relax, dear, it's just a meme. But oh boy, now he's done it. Not only did he assume that the person identifies as a female, but dear is a belittling, condescending, sexist slur. And then the feminist fit kicks in. While you are trying to write a paper for school or watch some YouTube videos, your notifications blow up with a ding, 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 constantly for the next 45 minutes. And don't be surprised if the SJW feminist starts tagging you to come get your boy or something, obviously implying that you're supposed to unfriend him. It's completely obnoxious behavior, but you aren't sure who to unfriend to get it to stop. On the one hand, you know perfectly well that the intersectional feminist was overreacting and started the argument, but you can kind of see why they would think the South Park gif is problematic, because you have a lot of friends that are offended by such things. Furthermore, even though it does seem like the social justice feminist gets in arguments all the time and was being rude, she usually has a number of people on her side. You usually agree with her about the actual arguments, and you certainly don't want her and her friends attacking you. Thus, after she won't stop attacking your friend and he legitimately does lose his cool and call her a bitch, you decide you've had enough and that the best thing to do would probably be to unfriend your non-SJW friend that you've known since high school. Because even though you two used to be pretty tight, you have very few ties to him in your current life, so you'd face less social consequences for doing that and you just want this to happen less. Congratulations, my lad. You just played right into the SJW feminist's hand, and now you will be a new kind of target. The target of eerily unnatural affection, and maybe even invitations to events that you previously had never been invited to, which are advertised as safe spaces for allies of queer, trans, and women of color. Oh my god, James, thank you so much for unfriending that guy. He was just so awful. I could not even. I'm sorry if I seem to overreact, but when you live your life being constantly demeaned by men from a, from a very early age, and some pompous jerk who's never even met you calls you dear and then a bitch over the internet, you tend to lose your patience really quickly. Anyhow, I hope this type of thing never happens again. What are you doing this Friday? You go to the party, and although almost nobody seems to be legitimately having fun, you are treated with that same eerie niceness from your friend and from her close friends. It's almost as if they want something from you. However, Though your SJW feminist friend said that she had hoped that that type of argument would never happen again, it will absolutely happen again, of course. But it gets worse for you, James. Next time it happens, and a problematic non-SJW friend of yours posts something on your Facebook timeline, your fourth wave intersectional feminist social justice warrior friend will pounce quicker and go from zero to a hundred, further emboldened, assuming that you are on her side. This guy is even worse than the last guy, James, she'll say. You see, James, you made the mistake of going with her to the safe space and thus have now officially proclaimed yourself to be an ally, which means 
you are held to stricter standards. And of course, she introduced you to some of her friends, so there's multiple piranhas ready to bite anybody problematic that comes too close. But of course, each and every time you rid yourself with one of these bad apples of former friends, you will be applauded by your new SJW friend group as they sit behind their keyboards and snap, saying, Yes, James! It might become, if you aren't careful, almost addictive. Until, of course, you no longer have any friends besides these people. That's all I have to say for this video. Drop me a comment and stay tuned.